What's up, everyone? How you doing? Hope you're doing amazing. It's a blessing to be alive. Such a blessing to be here today on episode 154. I'm with an extraordinary and for real, she is freaking extraordinary. Her name is Amber Lyon. Um, she is on Instagram at Modern Mind. Um, and I'm just going to make this assumption that, yeah, this is exactly what it what it says it is. This is about, you know, having that elevated mindset from, you know, not living in fear and doubt and lack and insecurity and um, things that don't help you evolve as a person and be a better version of yourself. And Amber is exactly that. So I'm so excited to have her on the Luke Mind Power podcast. Um, and also just to let you know, guys, this is her first podcast as well. <laughs> so I'm going <laughs> to spoil um, the, you know, the information there, but, um, but yeah, congratulations on taking action. It's a blessing to be here with you, Amber. Um, and I want to welcome you to the Luke Mind Power podcast. Thank you so much. I, I wonder if you, you know people can hear the jitters and that I'm feeling in my body. <laughs> hey, you know what? Like even right now, like just introducing to you, I've kind of like felt a little bit like, you know, um, flustered and, uh, you yeah. know, I was like, shit, am I saying that? And that's, that's the way that I've allowed myself to break through like this nervousness and anxiousness and like in the moment your mind starts to kind of play with you and you're not saying it right it's not working you're not doing it properly yeah. um, and that's things that most that holds most people back you know and it's like pushing through these kind of experiences and knowing that hey I'm trying my best I'm showing up I'm trying and a lot of people won't even try you know so um, I think mm. that just that transparency and vulnerability vulnerability has helped me to grow so much but Hey, uh, welcome again to this amazing podcast. And I just, um, let's just start off with by like, tell us a little bit about yourself, like introduce yourself and like, um, what is the the core of your your work? And, um, you know, what inspired you to, to create Modern Mind um, and to share what you're sharing? Completely. Thank you so much for having me. It is, it feels like a real privilege to be here and be out of put the voice because you're sharing these words on online and it's difficult because you have to kind of compact what you're feeling and what you're trying to communicate into you know it's like as short and sweet and what will translate the best so to have this kind of platform where you can kind of speak more organically and play around the edges and you know flesh things out it's really I'm really grateful for that opportunity so thank you um my name is amber <laughs> um i started modern mind about three years ago which is about the same time you're saying you've you started the loop mind um and which is funny they were both at a similar kind of stage you know in the, yeah. the journey of what that looks like uh at the time i am originally from new zealand so small country kind of really tight-knit communities you know you do what you see is being done around you it's really one track in front and if you don't do that there's like a lot of a lot of noise if you like try to go off the beaten path and what that looks like a lot of judgment um I love New Zealand I love I love love loved growing up here um but it it's kind of similar to Australia in the sense like it's a bit of tall poppy syndrome you know, someone's like, girl, shooting up too high, you have a tendency to want to like cut them down, keep everyone on the same playing field. Uh, and that's something that I knew, always knew that I wanted to be sharing and writing. I'd always been writing growing up and just taking my observations of the world and wanting to kind of transmute that into text and into something that would be a bit more like permanent than these like floating thoughts. Uh, but I just lacked the courage at the time to kind of do something more public. And in 2018, I moved to New York for modeling. That's so my trade. <laughs> um, and I was really lonely. I was disorientated. I felt mm, so far from home, so far from the people that kept me grounded and kind of swept up in this world of trying to be something that wasn't really authentic to me and I was writing more and I had lots of downtime between you know jobs and you're in your way somewhere getting lost on the subway trying to figure it out 
And I just remember one day, like I sat down at this cafe and I, I was lost and I was like, oh, you know what? I want to start putting this writing that I have like these collections of and I started sharing it because maybe the way I'm feeling and the tools that I'm using to cope with that would translate to somebody else. So it kind of was born out of this place of, I always had an intention somewhere inside to want to help and share and teach. But when it really started, it was, it was more impulsive. It was like, I, I couldn't not share what I wanted to share anymore. It was like, okay, I just got to do it. Yeah, that's pretty. And that's, that's, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. Like when you think about it, I mean, a lot of, and I just want whoever's listening to, to get really inspired by this, because I think there's a lot of people that are just sitting on the fence with some ideas, with some things that they've been contemplating or procrastinating on even um, to just do it, you yeah. know, to just take action. Because honestly, like when, just before we were recording and, and you know, you asked me how long have I, I've been doing this for? Um, and I said, August, 2019, and it's August, 2022. And mm. like, I'm just sitting here going freaking hell. Like the time just went like that and it does. And that's, you know, I always keep reminding people like time doesn't care about you. It's going to yeah. keep going and you've got to make a decision to either take action and do it or to live in regret, you know, because the last three years went like that. And the next three years are going to go like that as well. So, yeah. you know, you're the creator and it's up to you to decide, you know, where do I want to be in three years time? What do I want to achieve? Completely. What kind of life do I want to be living? Where do I want to be? You know? Um, so, yeah, thanks for sharing that. It's really, um, really powerful. So, so what happened with the modeling? You, you, you're still doing it or you were just uninspired because of the experience of feeling lonely? It was, I think I'd started modeling when I was 15 and I'm 25 now. So I've been doing it for 10 years and I moved around. I went to Europe and then I went to America afterwards. And I kept chasing this kind of idea of what it would mean to have success in that. And it was really, it was a, this point in time that when I, I had a certain amount of jobs under my belt or I was earning a certain amount of money or I had a certain amount of kind of acknowledgement in my industry that I would feel great about what I was doing. Like the, then I would feel fantastic and I, life would be sunshine and rainbows and I'd have this sense of self that was confident and kind of courageous, you know, and it was fascinating because as I did attain some of those things, I was completely disillusioned and I felt honestly like emptier than I'd ever been before. And I just realized that this like hamster wheel of like chasing these like external measures of how I was doing to justify doing something that I was really like hollow for me, like was a fast track to like feeling really low, like a lot of the time. And I think it's a really slippery slope in anything like outside of modeling to put your worth and who you are on these external measures in your career or your life for relationships or if it's like a certain amount of money per year or a career achievements it's just and and I know that will resonate with people because it's just so easy when you're told like oh when you achieve this you're going to feel a certain way and then to be blessed enough to have had that experience and realize it doesn't didn't give me anything that I didn't already have um it was really it was really interesting experience to sit back and be like okay well chasing after these things isn't bringing me fulfillment so what would so it opened this door of okay this isn't bringing me anything other than you know just chasing and chasing and chasing and feeling like I'm always behind what would make me feel good right now and I really remember sitting down and writing out you know what brought me joy like what what things when I spent time doing them actually made me feel good while I was doing them not on this like measure of like okay if I did that enough would it make me feel good at some point but no okay 
boil it right back down like as I'm doing it do I enjoy it and that was really always writing and communicating and sharing and just like tapping more and more into that and as I did and as I made more space for writing and modern mind and sharing and exploring that it just took the weight off modeling to make me happy so I still am modeling I'm still really enjoy it and like my relationship with it has changed because it's no longer a vessel of like how I feel about myself or how worthy I am or you know how successful I am it's like oh that's my work and I really enjoy it and I can see the benefits of it but the writing is something that really just brings me contentment Mm. it's just just that slight separation that's awesome man I'm so happy for you you know because I can see how you've gone through this kind of experience of like realizing that this which I'm acting in or performing or doing isn't something that is bringing me fulfillment, but I'm good at it. And it's something that, I mean, I, you know, I've connected with, right. And it's still something that I kind of like, there is, there is some sort of like benefit, obviously. um, But you found this other part of you that, um, that many people are looking for is that real peace, that real contentment, that real truth of like, what brings that to you? You know, and guys, um, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one. But when Amber speaks, like your energy is something else. You're, you're like for me, you. It feels like you're so grounded. Like I can mm-hmm. feel your peace in the way you speak. It's fucking amazing. Like for real. Bless. Thank yeah, you so man. much. <laughs> I swear to God, it's so good. Um, which is just amazing, and and that kind of. Um, definitely um would like for me would transpire from the fact that you're able to um express yourself on the work that you do and the your creativity because you have that contentment that peace and what i always say amber is i go your peace is your power yeah. you know the first thing is that you know your pain and your adversity and many people who have been through um adversity or abuse or really challenging times um growing up um that's you may not know it but it's your biggest blessing because it's about you owning your story not your story owning you and it's important for you to to do the work to overcome that so you can live your life and be the creator not be destined or defined because of what you went through so where you're at right now and that's where i say like i have a really good friend of mine his name's david power talk and he says your pain pain is power Mm. right and so i transmuted that to Once you overcome your pain, then you get grounded. Then you find your peace. And then your peace becomes your power because in your peace, you have your creative mind. You have your flow state. You have where you're really in alignment and grounded with who it is that you are. And you're able to really function off of like a high vibrational frequency. Um, And like, uh, like I feel like you're, (laughs) you're doing that, which is like phenomenal. Thank you. It's, it yeah. means a lot. It's been right. a long way to get to the point and it's still always, I'm always learning. And I couldn't agree with you more that pain is your power. And it's really hard to really, and I find, you know, word and online sometimes a little difficult because it's easy to say these things and know them to be true and then to actually integrate it as like a whole another experience to try and embark on that it takes so much courage and I think I I just couldn't agree more it's it's the hardest thing to do but it's the most important and I think a lot of my journey where I was pursuing modeling thinking it would make me feel happy it was these external measures it was also like I had huge chip on my shoulder and I just had this like sense I needed to prove myself and I'm just so grateful in my particular journey that I kind of have stumbled across and had people guide me to show that's maybe not the best way to go about it. Um, But it's just such a a really like natural thing to do as well when you're growing up, especially in an environment where you 
may not receive the validation that you really felt that you were you were old or that was like appropriate and then to try and taking those experiences and going to the world and being like notice me (laughs) please like validate what I'm doing and it's just it's really not something outside of that family home when you're growing up as an adult that anyone else can do for you and it's either and I think everyone has their own relationship with it but it almost needs to be back in the home or you need to be able to validate it yourself to be able to let go of this like need to have other people validate what you're doing. So where did that come from for you? Why, why do you feel like you were, you know, you're seeking or, you know, wanting that external validation or wanting to feel like you would, you know, like especially at the beginning before you started modern mind did you did you go deeper and discover where that came from completely I mean it's always something I had a really complicated relationship with like family dynamics growing up a really wonderful supportive mother and my father was kind of in and out and struggled with addiction and that was really difficult to understand as a kid because you know, when you're growing up, the world is black and white. There is no gray. It's like you are either here or you're not here. And usually it really boils down to you're loved or you're not loved. And that's, I feel like that's like the eyes through which you see as a child. It's either, it's not right and wrong. It's like you love me or you don't love me. So it's these extremes. And I felt definitely because I didn't have the understanding growing up and the absence of you know, this like father figure, this like core, this protection. And I feel like a lot of validation comes from that father figure growing up. I internalized that. And then I went to the world to try validate it. Mm. And through therapy and also through writing, like writing was a really healing tool. And I think like, it's so funny because pain is your power because even through pain, like I feel like our bodies, our minds, our souls, like always seek out the right medicine. And for me, that was writing, but for other people, like whatever you're intuitively drawn to, to like process and kind of like, again, like transmute this kind of pain through you is like a gift and like lean into it and explore it and see what comes out the other side. Because you see these, these painters and they've had these like really difficult, like lives and pain and emotion and it's so raw and they take these things and they make it art you know and Mm. something that's like a really beautiful thing for other people to experience but more importantly it's a way of like processing this like latent emotion that's there somewhere you know so I'm really grateful that I had writing to do that but I think for everyone it's different and there's different ways of processing that and kind of like getting it out of your body. Mm -hmm. It's amazing um, that you obviously have done the work and like what I say all the time now, because of the work I've had to do with myself is that your biggest investment in yourself is in your own personal development and healing so that you can put yourself back together. Because like you were saying, you know, if you lacked something when you were growing up, then you're broken. There's pieces of you that are missing. I know that there's quotes that say, you know, the wound is where the light enters. And, Mm. you know, how do you make a glow stick glow? You break it. So people say, I'm broken. Yeah. Okay. You're broken, right? So how are we going to fix that? Um, And that's why, you know, the work that I do is like, you know, going back to your childhood or your teenage years and figuring out what you feel that you were missing. What did you need more of, you know? Um, And that's the power of stopping and saying, okay, no more complaining. No more thinking that I'm screwed or this has defined me or the victim mindset. Mm. Because if you want to move forward in your life, You've got to take responsibility for you and you have to live with you forever. So 
how much longer do you want to suffer? How much longer do you want to be in your own way? Um, and I think it's phenomenal that, you know, you've done the work and I'm sure that you're probably still working on yourself. Um, I think it doesn't end. You know, I, I believe that uh, healing um, is something that you just continue to, to go through in life. You know, there's always a lesson. Um, you're not going to get to this plateau where, okay, I've done all the work. I'm completely healed. Um, again, believe whatever you want, but I, I believe that, you know, healing is just a lifelong journey. It's ongoing. You can always heal more. You can always learn more. You can always become more aware of your triggers and you learn more about your emotions and stuff like that. Um, so I think it's amazing that you've done um, so much of that. And I'm excited for you because I know that like, you're still not at your greatest. You know? <laughs> yeah. I know yeah, there's, I... I know there's, man, there's so much like ahead for you, you know, over the next like five or 10 years um, that you don't know about yet. Um, and mm. you're going to change a lot of people's lives, man, just because of you being yourself. Bless. I really appreciate that. And I mean, I, I, I really couldn't, agree more it is a lifelong it's not like I feel like a lot of the dialogue around healing it's a there's a really fine line because I feel like some of the language around it and some of the content is you know it's almost I I, I just I, I find it really difficult when it's almost like a theme around a cop-out it's like I'm oh this happened and so this is why I'm like this or this is why I don't do this or this is why I can't do this and I think it's a really fine balance of acknowledging making space for like this healing and learning and tripping up and stumbling and not getting it right all the time because we're not supposed to be perfect especially if we're carrying things that are really difficult and trying to learn behaviors that we didn't see growing up that weren't modeled for us but also exactly as you said like you can't do anything until you take responsibility if you're not taking responsibility you don't give yourself the power to choose and make new choices and I've always been reminded of that it's like you are your own creator you are the captain of your ship you know so you you make the calls and you decide where that's going and if you don't like you trust the waters to kind of let you flow aside maybe you'll like hit an island maybe you'll hit something else hit the rocks but so it's you can't rely on you know the world around you to dictate where you're going it's like you really have to like reflect and see where it is you want to go but such an important part of that is really like sitting down and creating space to be like okay like taking inventory where are my strengths where are my weaknesses okay that might be because of things that happened when I was growing up or that environment but I can choose to either blame and kind of offload the responsibility or I can be acknowledge it understand that that happened and kind of grieve for it in a way because I think that's appropriate sometimes but then make new choices and decide to not pass that on to you know your family or people around you because people we're I fully believe we're capable we're talented we're radiant we're inspiring creative beings so if people were reminded of that I think their whole worlds would open up again I love that yeah, man, we, we are. We're radiant. We're inspiring. We're, what did you say? Can you say that again? <laughs> radiant, creative, inspiring beings. Yeah, it's man. Really, like, it's like, I it's mean, true. I, yeah, but I know. But it's like you do. You do need to be reminded. Mm. And, and, and it's like, you know, when we were born, we, we, we were, you know, pure and as we evolved, we went through all these different experiences that have, you know, shaped us and conditioned us and programmed us to believe and think a specific way about ourselves. So like um, one of my mentors, Lisa Nichols, she says, you know, a lot of people say, um, well, I've always been like that. And, mm. and well, well, if that's working for you, keep going, keep doing that. Um, and that's 
pretty much like sums it all up. Like you say, I've always been this way. Well, if that's what you're happy with and you're content with where you're at, well, keep doing what you've always done because you'll keep getting yeah. what you've always gotten. So it's kind of like, yeah, you do have to dig deep and go, okay, something needs to change. You know, um, like like Jim Rohn, he says, you know, work work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Yeah. You know, he says um, something like, um, if you work, if you work on your job, you'll make a living. If you work on yourself, you make a fortune. Wow. Yeah. And it's just you're the one that. I mean, your reality is a direct reflection of the relationship with yourself. So love that. Yeah. Like couldn't, it, couldn't like, agree more. Come on. <laughs> I, I took me a while to realize that, um, but it's all internal and it's, it's you becoming aware of like your level of confidence, your level of self-esteem, your level of your, your insecurities, your fears, what, what are your, your thoughts? Um, it's, it's, paying attention to your energy and your intuition and everything to do with you. Um, but yeah, it's a process. And I know that sometimes, especially if you haven't started or you're just listening to this for the first time, you're like, how do I start? Mm. Um, you know, and it's like, shit, I, I don't like, I know I talk a lot about self-love because I never had a relationship with myself, but I see so many people out there um, like commenting on my social platforms and they're like, how do I start to learn to love myself? Like people have no idea. And I mean, it's like, I have to sometimes check myself just the same way as like, you know, you can be doing this podcast for the first time. And after you've done something like so many times, it's kind of just second nature it becomes a habit. It's normal. Right. Yeah. Um, but I have to check myself because like, bro, you, you would, you were like this at the start too. Like you, you didn't know how you were going to do it. Um, when you started all your stuff that you've been doing now, um, it was on you and you had to ask questions and you had to invest in yourself, you know, and you had to learn. So, I mean, if I can learn, you can learn, everyone else can learn, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, evidence, the, the evidence of the journey is here. It's just about starting, taking action. Um, but tell us, tell us a little bit more about like modern mind like let's talk about the name first and then yeah. and then tell us like deeper into like what you're actually what is the purpose of modern mind why why what do you want people to gain from it i mean i with the name modern mind it really was born from you know what is it like to be conscious and mindful and grounded like in today's world and it I think it changes and mindfulness is kind of timeless and being like in your seat of yourself throughout the day is timeless but we're faced now with more distractions than ever before more comparison more insights into other people's lives and jealousy and a lot of idealism and compare just comparison I feel like it's a it's a worldwide competition at the moment and because of technology it's you're keeping tabs on not just your social circle but like millions of people and it's overwhelming and I think now more than it's ever been before so modern mind really I was you know I thought about the name for a while and it kind of just came to me intuitively and I felt it was right but it is because what tools would best serve people now you know and what reframes and what could be most helpful for the times that we're in now um but also touching on these kind of timeless mindful concepts and bringing that in I feel that it was really it really came from a place of like selfishness which sounds really kind of strange especially because now I know like it's it's this kind of notion of, you know, you do it for everyone else and that's why you should be sharing. And yes, I'm a part of that. And yes, I feel so connected to that. But also I feel like any creator, the seed that's sown to start something is, it is kind of selfish and it almost like it's okay that it is because it's coming from a place of your own processing and your own 
kind of exploration and ideas and for me personally I need I it was like a byproduct of just like learning about the world and wanting to share and wanting to teach and for me when I was started sharing that on modern mind it was it felt so wonderful and so rewarding like that's the element to me that was selfish because I felt so rewarded by sharing it on the page and then seeing it resonate and people connecting to it is just it's like euphoric because it's less to do with me and my name. Like I didn't ever associate it with it personally until kind of later down the line, it was really this anonymous modern mind and I was kind of behind it, but it was just so rewarding to share things that people actually found helpful. And they were lessons that I was kind of stumbling across and learning in my own life or through books or teachers and those experiences and now moving forward it's just like it's I've never experienced what it feels like to actually do something that feels so aligned and it's just yeah so deeply rewarding to be sharing these lessons and sharing these you know thoughts on the world and it's much less about me as it is about kind of just this like shared experience of learning and growing and trying to figure things out as we go along and I kind of see the page as like a like a big sister or a big brother or kind of this role of like hey I'm here for you and like I'm rooting for you and like Mm. maybe you don't have that in your life or around Mm -hmm. you but like I'm I'm here like I'm like your biggest fan your biggest supporter you can do it yeah that's awesome man that's really powerful. I'm just looking at, at your page. Um, and I just want to ask you, how do you, I want to share some of your, um, your work, but how do you keep yourself grounded from, you know, getting and receiving the recognition, receiving like um, the, the love, right? When you, when you're posting stuff, because it's so easy again to, you know, using social media, um to kind of like you get into this addictive state of like wanting to post stuff that gets a lot of attention and when it does it kind of fuels you and makes you feel worthy so how do Mm. you detach yourself from knowing that this is what you're doing with an intention to hopefully inspire someone um but you know, detach yourself from the, oh my God, it's got a thousand likes and like 500 comments. And now I feel enough. It's so tricky because Mm. the system and the platform is set up in a way that actually the, the whole intent and purpose is to pull you into this game of numbers and that validation And I've definitely slipped into it like along the way, you know, you see it doing really well and it's like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I found that as I was reading milestones and growing the page that it started to feel almost similar to the notes I was talking about with modeling. It's like, well, nothing changes. Like you hit a certain number there's not like this moment in time where you felt something before and then you hit that and then something changes. Everything remains the same. You could have 10 million people, 50 million people and your day-to-day life is going to be the exact same pretty much, you know, like you wake up same time, similar environment. Um, so that helped having that reference point, but I try to really tap into, okay, why am I doing this? Where did this come from? And like, what is my like purpose here? Like what's the intention behind the page? And what that is, is really like for modern mind, at least is how to show people that their life could be better right now. If they reframe something in their mind right now, their life could literally feel lighter and like more joyful. And that's the intent, the audience it's tricky with the audience like it really the numbers don't matter you talk to one person and that's all that matters so just constantly reminding myself of that because it's hard it's really hard because it's like you want to be like oh look at this or look at that you know but 
And I'm like, okay, no, let's just ground, we'll ground that down. Why did we start? Yeah, because um, this is this is the part of this experience where you're posting to make a difference, right? But at the same time, um, this is the hard part when you're getting started. For example, there's a lot of people out there that maybe have a thought of or an idea of, hey, I want to start a page like this or I want to share my thoughts or whatever. I want to post videos and inspire people or something. I share my story, for example. And the first thing is, but I've got no, no one follows me. or I've only got 10 followers or I've only got 100 followers. And it's like the doubt of, well, one like, two likes, no comments, right? And it's at the, that's that, that kind of journey of like, I'm not getting any recognition for what I'm doing. So what's the point, right? Um, I, get, I, and so and I get it, yeah. Is, is, is there this drive and motivation to continue to produce a high frequency of information so that you do get the recognition that you feel you deserve? Like that's the, that's the motivation because for example, if you don't get the recognition given where you're at right now, is there a part of you that goes, wow, that didn't do so well. Mm. What can I do to improve that? Is there a reason why people didn't resonate with what I just posted? Do you have that in yourself at all? Yeah, that mechanism does kick in, but I have this moment where before when I write something and before I share it one of the most important things and this is each to their own and really it's, um, I think it's such a personal thing for people to explore but I'm really disciplined on the fact that I don't ask other people for advice on my writing before I share mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. um, I really and if I'm questioning something like I just I really am like okay either we'll share it or I won't share it like I I really try to lean into this kind of this this decision making because I feel like it's really good for worth and also just like self-trust. Um, so then I know when I share something in the response, it's it's come from me and it's something that I really like it, it, it's authentic in that way of this came from me and I chose to share it because in that moment it felt like the right thing to do so how well or not well received it is doesn't, doesn't matter. necessarily matter yeah mm. it, that's the most important thing for me because when I if I was started to taking other people's opinions or creating work that I felt like would resonate better with my audience I think it's a slippery slope because then you're using this again this external validation to create and I feel like work when it's created from that place you it's really funny and it's really like nuanced but I feel like I notice that when I'm like looking at other works whether it's a coat or food or writing or art I can feel when it's been made from like this source of like inner creativity and this kind of authenticity or it's been made because it's like I think you'd like this. So mm. here you go. And it's it doesn't mean it's better or worse, but it just doesn't have the same depth. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Like because it's really, it's really tricky to navigate this, especially when you share something, you're like, this was great, and then it doesn't resonate. It's like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but like what you're sharing is powerful in terms of the fact I, I wrote this, this came from me um, and how well it goes um, doesn't matter. It's either. Mm. And, and the truth is that, yeah, um, you know, there is this, um, I mean, again, like you said, each to their own. Like for me, there's this, there's this drive and motivation to, to create content and to re release content on my social platforms that will resonate with people so that more people can share it so that I can help more people freaking wake up. Yeah. 
you know, that's really the core of what I do. So, so, so there is, for me, there's this motivation of like, if something doesn't do as well as something else, I do look at it and go, okay, how can I improve that? Or what didn't I like, or what didn't people like about that, that I can share next time that, you know, will um, resonate with people. But the, the truth is, um, you, you're never going to, it's never a win. It's more about, um, it's like TikTok, for example, TikTok is like, a, I mean, but any any social platform is the same thing. It's like a poker machine, right? Mm. It's like you yeah, keep putting the money in, keep putting the money in, keep putting the money in, and then you get a feature, <laughs> you get the jackpot, and all of a sudden it starts coming out. Um, but again, it, it, it does like what you're sharing is a real grounded approach. Um, and I mean, it's there's I, I think that there's it's just about your vibe and and what feels right for you. And for me, there's this underlining motivation of like wanting to produce stuff that you know does get to a lot of people mm. you know um and i think that's just that that is the the motivation for me sometimes i do look at it if something doesn't go so well i'm like okay why didn't that go so well what what didn't i write correctly or you know whatever um but at the same time um you know i'm i'm not perfect i'm still learning and i know that i'm like i still have this creative side of my my work that i haven't explored fully yet like i do write um but for example i haven't written a book yet and i know that i'm gonna have to and i'm not the biggest reader either <laughs> but i mean <laughs> i when i when i write on my instagram when i put my posts out and i write in the captions that's me you know, yeah. um, when I'm in my Facebook community, um, you know, and I'm sharing information about a training that I'm creating, I'm writing like freaking a lot of stuff. Like, so I know that I'm very creative in the way that I communicate in written format. Um, I've only just started journaling, like I'm doing it once a week. Like it's not, a, it's never been like, I've never, you know, been that type of person. Um, but yeah. again, I'm trying to explore different avenues because I'm, you know, I'm getting to this higher frequency um, of my life now, where I'm paying attention more to what, you know, ultra successful people are doing and what's working for them. And so I'm trying to see how uh, their habits um, will work with me, you know, and yeah. um, even though I've explored all these avenues before, journaling, meditation, um, mindfulness, you know, obviously exercise is very important, eating healthier, um, setting your goals and, you know, creating a, a, an intention at the beginning of the day, gratitude journal, all that kind of stuff. Um, but reading, that's still something for me that I just don't um, do. I love listening to podcasts. <laughs> you know? I, I'm, yeah, I feel that. It, the podcast, it's like, it's such a, it's, I love them so much. I listen to them day in, day out because of that. Like, it's like this new one, I think, especially for people that are really like productive or really goal focused. Mm. The beauty of a podcast is I can listen and I can do it at the same time. I can be mm -hmm. doing a task and I can be listening to my podcast. I can be on a walk. I can be cooking. I can be doing the dishes. And I feel like that kind of like multitasking really appeals to the like people that are growth focused um so I think and it's amazing because it's this community where you, people are talking about growth and the people that are listening are really growth focused so it's like this mm -hmm. beautiful match made in heaven uh, how are you finding journaling just out of curiosity my freaking hands was getting sore <laughs> <laughs> and I actually I was writing that like for real I actually wrote it yeah and I was like I don't do this often but I'm willing to do it once a week on my day off and my normally yeah. I'd get on my laptop and I'd start typing. Um, but for now, I'm going to just try and write. So all of a sudden then I've written four pages. I'm like far out. But it's like, yeah, it's I know that it's powerful because I've heard it time and time again from so many successful people, you know, mm -hmm. and it is really getting your thoughts out of your head and putting it on paper. Um, so it's there's definitely stuff that I haven't explored yet there's definitely another version of me that's evolving mm. um and I think this is what this beautiful experience is about but let me ask you Amber when you think about growth 
for someone out there who isn't living in their purpose or isn't doing something that they love or isn't hasn't found their creative space yet, why would I listen to growth if I don't have something that I'm able to work towards or have I haven't found that for me yet? Um, you know, mm. there's that there's that thing like I'm in growth because I'm doing what I love and I'm growing. And my purpose is not to stay stagnant. My purpose is to continue to evolve, build the biggest as uh, to, to like continue to explore life. Really life is an adventure. Um, I want to have fun with it. I want to embrace the challenges and, and the, the hard times, but then when the good times are there, enjoy them consciously. Right. Um, mm. So how do you, how do you, what kind of advice can you give to someone who is kind of feels stuck at the moment? Um, and you're like, yeah, just listen to podcasts, like start listening to it when you're cooking, <laughs> you know, when you're driving yeah. um, and like, yeah. What kind of advice can you give? Um, well, firstly, my advice, uh, what I want to say is I've been there. I've been where you are right now. And I know what it feels like to have this, pent up love and energy and just all this stuff you want to share and not having even a modality to choose to share it through it's a really disorientating feeling of I know I want to be doing something and I know there's something out there for me but I just don't know what it is so I've been there I think everyone has had the experience of being there at some point and it does it feels strange and it feels disorientating and it feels tough when you see people around you that seem to have it all figured out or found their thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really natural place to be. And I think my advice would be like for anything when I love like metaphors. So <laughs> um, I imagine like when you ask that question of like, the soil of the ground and a seed planted and you're looking at it from above and you're like nothing's growing there's nothing here nothing's ever going to grow um, so maybe you don't water and you don't tend to that ground but the most important thing to do when you're at that stage and you maybe haven't figured it out what is your thing is like look after your environment like water your environment and make sure the ground is like ready for growth so what does that look like for you is it eating well is it a routine is it the exercise like how can you make your life glow how can you make yourself feel really energized and ready and maybe you, you don't know what that's for yet what this training or what this preparation is for but I can just guarantee that when you do that and you really look after your relationships and look after your life, look after your body, your mind, you'll be in such a fantastic position when you do come across what it is, is your thing. And you'll be more open to seeing it when it crosses your path. That's like my like go-to advice for any time I've felt lost or any time I've had a friend that's been feeling like a little like, oh what is this whole you know like what am I like what's the point and like putting all this extra effort in now it's like trust me like when you are ready like the opportunity will find you have faith trust yourself mm. trust the process trust what you're going through right now is opening doors that you don't know about yet will open um and it's important to go through the journey that you're going through but most importantly, it's to be aware of, okay, if I can change right now, what can I do to change? If I can change yeah. direction, um, because again, you're the one that, you know, I say indecision is the cause of all worry. Mm. Just oh my God, there. I got like shivers. It's so true. <laughs> you know? Um, so while you're speaking and talking about environment, I'm sitting here, look at, at Instagram and on the post that you created that says create a healthy environment. Mm. And so I just want to read um, what you wrote and it says when we plant a seed we understand that its ability to grow is a result of its environment we make sure it has ample exposure to sunlight plenty of water and that the soil has the right nutrients for its growth we are no different our growth is a natural consequence of a well-balanced life spend time with family that feel warm like the sun Water yourself with habits and routines that fill you up and nourish your body with foods that sustain you. 
Mm. Powerful shit, man. Seriously. Um, I know everyone who's listening is going to follow your page because um, they need to read your, your work. Um, but I always would say that a lot of us were not raised in a healthy environment. Mm. Hence why we're, we're disassociated, completely disconnected, traumatized, um, hurt, you know, and, and I'm like, if you were raised in an environment that complemented your life, which is something that I'm completely adamant um, in living right now, uh, mm. you know, I'm very protective over my energy. I never used to be. I always used to say yes to everybody else. Um, I always used to be available for everybody else. Um, and that's why I say like your biggest and most important relationship is the relationship with yourself. If you don't take care of you, no one's coming to save you. No one's going to take care of you. Um, but most importantly, you're in control of your environment. You're the one that creates that, mm. you know? So the detachment and disconnection from the world has helped me to go, okay, I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to completely block out everything so that I can find me again. And then I can basically, I'm the one that's in control of watering me, filling me up, making sure that I'm full and overflowing, mm. making sure I'm surrounding myself with the right people. OQP, something that Les Brown says, only quality people. Yes. Amen. <laughs> because, because you become like people are contagious. Energy is contagious. Um, and so you have to choose who you're surrounding yourself with because you become them. We emulate each other, copy each other. So you want to make sure you're surrounded by really empowering or people that complement your life, not people that when you share a big dream, they go, oh, that's, you know, I don't know if that's a good idea or, you know, of course there's the, you know, you want to catch your, your friends out or people that you love if they're doing something that's detrimental to their health or well-being, right? Mm. Um, but at the same time, it's about, you know, being that, that optimist of like, absolutely, like, don't, don't, uh, what do they say? Rain on my parade? You know, yeah. like, can I share with you a freaking massive dream that I'm going to freaking do this? I don't want to hear you yeah. going, oh, you know, be careful. Or like, you know, um, I want to hear like freaking oath, go and do it. Yeah. Completely. That's awesome. I'm so excited for you. And like, that's all, you know, even uh, it's something that I practice, um, you know, with my clients and being a coach um, and just being who I am naturally is tell me a dream, Amber, and I'll tell you, fucking oath. Yes. Yeah. Go. Go and do it. That's the kind of people you want in your life, not people who are freaking yeah. trying to tell you what you can't do. Yes. And getting to know who those people are in your world. And if you don't have them, find them. Because you need, you need that. You know, you need that support around you. Because there's so much noise on why you can't. Like you or you'll find... 15 people in your life right now that tell you why you can't do something. So mm. it's about, you know, recruiting for the other team as well. Like at least let it be a balanced, like ground or balanced environment around you, mm. you know, to just like let in some people that are in your corner fighting for you and like rooting mm -hmm. for you to succeed. And it's really hard. I think like I had a conversation with a friend recently and it's sometimes, you know, it's, it's easy to be there for people when things are kind of like tickety boo and going along just fine, or maybe are maybe leaning a little more difficult, but it's actually can be really hard to show up for friends when they're doing really well and kind of put aside your own jealousy and your own kind of emotional experience of what that looks like. So I think it's something we really need to like cultivate in our relationships more. It's like celebrating and like being supportive yeah because that is definitely um not an easy thing to go through especially if you have someone close to you that's becoming really successful and Completely. you're not there yet and how you show up and act is like you have to be careful be mindful of your ego um you know don't get jealous um mm -hmm. you know that's why i always say uh, i heard this i think rihanna said this it was a video i think it was on instagram or somewhere and she said when you learn to love yourself you'll never want to be anyone else mm. and i've always just used this ever since i heard it because it's so true and it's so powerful you yeah. know you 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 have this strong loving relationship with yourself and then all you have to give is love and so all you want to see is people winning yes 
if we all live like that can you imagine what a beautiful yeah, well, environment that would be yeah, yeah but that, that that just shows how much pain and hurt and um, disconnected people there are around the world Completely. so that's why your job amber is so important likewise honestly likewise it's like it's a really nice and like the first time doing this <laughs> but i'm really grateful to be doing it Rushing with you it. and yeah <laughs> thanks <laughs> um Welcome. and to connect with someone that's actually doing something so similar in the sense of like wanting to connect with people and teach and share and like really cultivate these traits that maybe weren't cultivated in people's environments but showing them like you know you you can be like the light in your life not just for yourself but for the people around you and it's it's contagious like you said and it really it spreads when you have more people cultivating those things and displaying those traits and you can see them around you you know you start to question like maybe I can be like that as well maybe I can feel a little more joyful in the day maybe I can laugh a little more maybe I could do something that actually brings me you know happiness in my life so it's really cool to see absolutely so I I, I just want to ask you a couple of questions just in regards to self-love and then also I want to know a little bit about or share with us like what you do in terms of um journaling do you journal like every day because obviously you you know you're writing and sharing your thoughts is this something that really is how powerful is it for you it's funny I like have this balance between like forcing myself to sit down and write and then doing it intuitively when it feels right because like sometimes if you do it only when it feels right it's not that often and sometimes mm -hmm. when you force yourself it's just like a bunch of like crappy work so it's like this balance between the two I don't journal every day but one thing I do every day is I take out my journal and I write out my healthy habits for the day my intention and a list of kind of five to eight things that I'm grateful for in that morning maybe that from the day before and kind of my tasks for that day as well that I want to achieve and that kind of like for me if I'm a boat that's my rudder you know for that day like where am I going like what's this going to look like mm. um but my writing for modern mind really I'll be my ritual around it and I really think like for any creative work it's nice to create a bit of a ritual because it's like it's your brain it's like mm. kind of channeling like the primal energy of our brain which is like habit and when you do certain things to your environment you're triggering this kind of mode of your brain and for me that's going for a walk and being out in nature and that's when I feel like my writing flows best and it feels really in intuitive what's ever coming through and whatever day it might be so I tend to go for a walk each day and when I'm doing that I'll, I'll start churning and thinking over something and I'll be like, oh, and I'll sit down and I'll get on my notes and I'll just like start typing out. Um, and then aside from that, physically journaling, like with my like handwriting tends to be like in the evenings. And sometimes I'll do that like once or twice a week to kind of just process anything that might be coming up and maybe something I hadn't actually had the space during the day to kind of acknowledge. And it's kind of lingering somewhere in my mind. So I like to give those things an opportunity to come out at some point. It's amazing. Thanks for sharing that for real. Um, what about self-love? How is that in, incorporated into your life? How important is that for you? And why is it important anyway? So important, <laughs> like the most important. Uh, I think like any relationship, like you've said, like it's, it's, the most important and I think a lot of like the talk around self-love it's become like gimmicky and like a little bit in the sense of like you know run a bubble bath and light a candle and do this kind of like these like indulgent behaviors like it's self-love but um for me self-love is like accountability and the 
kind of like an older sister like nurturing figure that comes in that's like what would best serve me and set me up for my day or the week and so what does that look like and it's kind of this like planning mindset or this kind of preparation mindset and taking time to sit be with myself and have this like solo time where I can kind of have the space to think clearly but also like it's it's yeah really accountability okay what could I do this week that would set me up to feel great and maybe I won't enjoy those things like maybe I don't really feel like waking up at six and going to my like Pilates class like maybe I don't feel like doing that at the time but I'm going to feel fantastic afterwards mm. and it's it's helping me meet my goals for me that's love yeah um begin with the end in mind Yes. We always think about, oh, I have to do this. And then if you're like, hang on a second, think about how it's going to be when you finish. And we're like, yeah, there's the motivation, you know. Um, I wanted to ask you um, just in regards to, because self-love is huge, um, but also uh, one thing that I've learned in my journey is so, how, how important solitude is um, mm -hmm. and having that relationship with yourself. And I know that the one thing that, you know, many people out there can be confused about um, is, for example, if you're in a relationship, um, how do you exercise solitude? A lot of people think that I'm when I'm speaking, I'm only speaking from a person who, because at the moment I'm single, um, but I talk about solitude a lot because the one thing that I did four years ago was I said, no more girlfriends. I want, I want mm. me. I want to find me, right? Um, and when I talk about solitude, I invite people who are in a relationship to exercise solitude. Just because you're in a relationship with someone else doesn't mean that you can't have an individual relationship with yourself. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Couldn't agree more and think it's completely one of the most important things like for the health of a relationship as well so like I don't know I kind of see it as uh, relationships can be kind of like a, a supplement in some ways for traits or characteristics that we might not be wanting to develop ourselves or explore have the confidence to explore just yet um, and I think like relationships are beautiful and so rewarding it's such a fantastic experience but if you're coming at it from a place of like lack if it's like it's setting it up for this like codependency and it's hard to exist separate because you feel like part of you is also part of this relationship mm. um and I'm in a relationship now and it's been such a rewarding experience to have come at it from a position of I was in the best place I could have possibly been before we started dating and Mm -hmm. I felt so whole and so in flow with my life and what I was doing and really content and fulfilled. And I know so was he. So it was such a different experience to have these like two worlds kind of come together and meet, but still be really separate in a lot of ways, like still have our own worlds. And mm. it's been a really fantastic experience because I feel like a lot of the modeling of relationships and media and around us is like you should be inseparable and so intertwined and like not know where one starts and the other begins and it's like this whole notion and that always actually like terrified me and put me off relationships because I'm quite an independent person and it doesn't have to be that way and I think it's actually a strength to make time for yourself and like make sure you're still like nurturing your relationships and your life separate to that relationship and really making sure your world feels full still and I feel like the only way to do that is to take time separate to the relationship as well I'm gonna not um say anything further because what you just shared was just amazing and I know that I can elaborate and I can go on about relationships and stuff but what you just shared is is so powerful man like um and then you know i'm so, and i'm so happy for you and your partner you know that you guys are like vibing and having being able to you know experience life um with the togetherness mm -hmm. but also with the 
with the strength of knowing that you are both whole and, and complete and content and individual and you have your own, you know, journeys as well, which is so amazing, you know? Um, and this is like, this is something that I really want to um, definitely, you know, attract, not hasn't happened for me yet, but it's okay. Um, but, you know, I know that as we, as I continue this journey, as you continue your journey, you know, helping more people become aware of this power, like relationships yeah. make up pretty much our whole life, you know, um, and we have relationships with everyone, but being able to, you know, um, be content and strong and whole and complete on your own. Um, and being able to be in a relationship like that also is so healing and so empowering, you know, to know that you don't have this codependency that I'm relying I had in the past. On you. Yeah. yeah, I was as well. Like I'm relying yeah. on you for my happiness. Yeah. It's really like pointing the fingers, like you do this, I'll do that. You do this, I'll do that. And it's, it's just, it's a seesaw and it's really hard to keep balance when you're, someone's always up and someone's always down, you know? Mm. Yeah. The, the, uh, you complete me sentence pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like for real <laughs> that's like uh, you. what you complete like wow so I'm half yeah so. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. um yeah man so Amber it's been amazing just to um to to hear your wisdom to spend time with you um you know one thing that I'm aware of is that you know time is so precious it's the one commodity it's the one thing of life that we cannot get back. And I'm just so grateful that, um, you know, you were open to doing this interview and um, sharing your power, sharing your gift, um, sharing your sharing your precious time with us. Um, and I really invite everybody who's tuning in um, to, to follow Amber. Um, where can people find you on social? On social? Um, Thank you so much. Such a such beautiful words to share. And it's been really honestly such an amazing experience to share with you as well. So thank you, firstly. And um I'm just modern mind. Modern mind on Instagram. Um that's kind of my only outlet. Sometimes I'll share on the blog as well, but the most frequent kind of appearances are on the um Instagram page. Cool. Awesome. And uh one question before we finish up and that question is what do you want to do that you haven't done yet in this world like before you finish what do you want to do that you haven't done yet or what do you want to be remembered for that you haven't done yet book it's always been in my heart mm -hmm. like since I was young so Mm -hmm. that's is there is that, that a I'm... project that's like in the making or is it just at the moment it's just a vision I've started working on it mm. and we're at the very beginning stages so I'm trying because it's something that's been in my heart for so long I'm trying to just let it just unfold um but it's something that I I can't leave without leaving behind <laughs> yeah Great question absolutely powerful man um i can see it happening for you and uh i know that when you do release it uh it's going to definitely be a uh, new york times bestseller no doubt about it <laughs> thank you i love that <laughs> no, this no. is people rooting for you this is what it feels like <laughs> yeah man 100 percent. i know it. it's it's not um I, yeah. I can't see it being any other way absolutely Amber, it's Thank been a blessing. So Thank you so much. Keep pushing, keep showing up, keep being you and keep changing the world. Yeah.